Welcome back. It's time for some database maintenance. So today I'm bringing you along to show you what it takes to update the chart and GPS information on the Avidine EX Series MFD so that I can be legal for IFR flying. All right, so let's look at updating some of the nav data. Um, we are going to take the data we just loaded onto the USB stick. I suppose this will all make a little bit more sense if we go back half a step and show you how to actually load this data. All right, so once we're ready to update these cards, we just need to go into Jepson Distribution Manager, JDM. Log in, and even on a decent connection, this software still takes a minute to do its background refresh. And it'll take everything you've set up, look for updates, and let you know what's going on here. And we'll see that we have a few update options available to transfer, and the one that I've already done. All right, one more brief layered interruption. The CMAX charts on Avidine have a unique identifier that link your MFD hardware to your Jeppesen account. So I want to show you where you can get your CMAX code that you have to enter into JDM before it will correctly load onto your MFD. So here's the website you would go to to generate a CMAX key code. Um, I will put a link to this website in the description below. Uh, but you're going to come in here and put in your MFD serial number. Um, the Serial number should be eight digits. If it's less, there's a note over here on how to pad that uh, with leading zeros to make sure that it's a format that the website recognizes. You will also then go ahead and put in the software code that Jeppesen has given you after you've talked to them. Uh, and once you've filled that out and hit the get code button, it will generate a unique identifier for your system. And you're gonna take this code, write it down and keep it somewhere safe because you're gonna use this inside the Jeppesen Distribution Manager software to make sure that all of the stuff that you have paid for is accurately loaded onto your system. All right, now back to the regular updates. So in order to update one of these, you just need to insert the card, whether it is your uh, Garmin or Avidine cards, or in this case, just a jump drive for the EX5000. And once the system recognizes that it's got the right data on there and it's just out of date, you click update. And it will take a second to download and transfer. And once this is all done, this will end up grayed out and you'll be ready to eject the data, load it into the bootloader on the actual MFD, and your charts are all updated. The same process goes for the Garmin cards, although Garmin cards can be updated through Garmin itself. Uh, you end up getting a little bit better pricing doing it as a package. And when you have something as old as some of these EX5000 or EX500 units, um, it doesn't really make sense to split them up. Pricing is much cheaper when you go through uh, and get like an IFD or something newer for your navigator. Um, but their packaging is all kind of weird. Uh, but this is just the easiest way to update all of those cards. And there, we're fully up to date on that card. Once we close all that out, we'll see that it's grayed out, no more transfers remaining. One thing to keep in mind is that you do need to have your uh, USB stick formatted to only use up to a maximum of two gigabyte capacity in the right format, uh, the details of which you can find with your favorite search engine. Um, but that's how we update everything and transfer it to the plane. All right, now with those updates out of the way, let's go back to the plane where we're actually gonna load the data onto the MFD and we're going to put that in the left side of the MFD. Uh, at this point, we're just going to power up the avionics. And I apologize for the angle of the sun, but this is the time of day I was able to get out here and do this. So Flight Max is going to kind of show up. Um, we'll see if we can't try to make that work. And then you're going to get a message that says something other than standard startup. It's going to say in a moment here, I don't know if you can see that, but it will say data loader ready, system update. You go ahead and just click the proceed button and then you're going to get that nice little progress bar. Can I, can I help with the shadow? Maybe a bit. Um, so you're just going to let it kind of go through its thing and it will take uh, this. The, the nav data is not very long. This only takes a, a minute or two. When you get to the chart data, you could be here for eight to 10 minutes. I've had it take as long as 15. 
Uh, so if you have a GPU that you want to plug in, that is helpful. Um, in the middle of the summer, it's not as big of a drain on the batteries. You'll still get started just fine. Um, but there it is. Um, right now it's gone through and everything is loaded. Now it's verifying. And I'm kind of talking through this one sort of real time. So this particular process is not a, uh, a super long one. Um, but when you do the chart data, that will take much longer. In this case, with the nav data, it just boots right in and you can pull this out. On the charts, it's gonna ask you to restart the system. But there we are, our nav data is updated. I do also want to try and show a little bit of where um, you get some of your setup information if this is your first time doing an update on an Avidine system. Um, when you boot up, you get your press any key, so we're gonna do that. Um, you get your fuel initialization if that's something you've got on your system. I believe it's common to most of them. Um, nothing is really here other than, you know, you're starting fuel. Um, so we're going to click through that and this is our main page. Um, if we go over to the aux page, this is where most of our system information exists. And if you come and you look up in this data block here, you're going to see that you have a software part number, the media part number, the charts information is down here, and your serial number is going to be right here as well. Um, and this is the information that you want to provide to Jeppesen and Avidine to set up your account so that your system is correctly loading all of the information that it needs. Um, so this will be brought back into that internet page and you'll be able to load things on to your system. This uh, serial number is also provided if you ever wanted to upgrade to having um, some other CMAX information on this system. Uh, to me, that is not currently a value add, so I haven't done it. Uh, so I hope that helps somebody find that information as needed. The nav data on the GPS units is pretty easy though. That just pulls out the side. You get these little cards here. You can get them from Garmin or from Jeppesen. Once you have it loaded, you just push it back in. The system will restart automatically. It even says, hey, something new is in there. I'm gonna restart. Uh, and provided that it's good data, it'll load. The card on the right-hand side is terrain and obstacle data. Um, you don't have to up update that very often. It uh, doesn't get changed very often. Um, and this one is not required to be updated legally uh, to fly, whereas your nav data does if you're doing IFR. Um, you do it once for the top, once for the bottom. Each unit has its own card. And that is just as easy as any of uh, the updates up here, if not easier other than the fact that it takes a little bit of time on remembering to pull these cards or bringing a computer with you that has a good internet connection or the data downloaded. Thanks for following along today. If this helped you at all, please click that thumbs up button down below and consider subscribing to encourage me to continue creating more content surrounding the Columbia. And if there are any questions you might have that I didn't answer, leave those in a comment down below as well.